Let's take a look now at what will be my favorite tab at the element budgeting screen. And that's the budget analysis tab. Here's where everything comes together. And hopefully, not only is it going to show you what your numbers are, Element is also going to try to suggest to you how you could improve your numbers if and when your profit isn't exactly where you need it to be. So stick with us here and we'll explain all the components of the budget analysis tab and how it works and where it's pulling the numbers from. And hopefully the numbers and advice given to you here will help guide you moving forward. I'm looking at my budget analysis tab for the budget I just built here. And we'll take a look at some variables here, but let's first explain the different components of the screen. First of all, at the, at the top left here in this tile, what it's doing here is breaking down your budget by what you're spending on the different amounts. So for example, you can see here that of my revenue, 28.8% is going to wages, 12.3% to equipment, 25.3% to materials and et cetera, with a 10% profit left over. Now, typically we recommend companies shoot for a 10% net profit. That's a fair net profit margin to go for. You can shoot for more and you can shoot for less, but it's really important to note that whatever profit is in your budget, that's the profit that your estimates are gonna be gunning for as well. The estimates are gonna be looking to the budget for two things. How much overhead do I need to recover? And how much profit do I need to add to hit the sales goal that you set in your budget? More on that if you watch the profit and loss video. If you haven't watched that already, take a look at that and it'll explain this in more detail. But this is going to show you where all your sales revenue is going or getting spent on. This box here is called revenue per man hour. Now, the first time you look at this, when you first do your budget, the percentage of unbillable hours is going to be 0%. The number here, 69.39 an hour, is not telling me this is what I need to charge per hour per man. What that number is telling me is if I took the total price of a job, including all materials, all overhead recovery, all profit, all equipment, the total price of the job, and divided it by the number of hours on the job, my jobs need to average $69.39 per man hour in order for me to hit my sales goal. So the way the budget works is it takes your total sales and divides that by your total field labor hours to come up with this number. But if you remember back to our field labor budget, we didn't break out hours on jobs and hours, you know, working around the shop or driving or any of our unbillable hours. So it's not fair to count on our unbillable hours to hit our sales goal because we're not going to pass those hours off to our customers. So what you need to do here in order to get an accurate revenue per man hour is to go up here and estimate what percentage of unbillable time. This is time where your crews are on payroll, but not getting estimated to jobs that you have. Now, some companies will have a fairly low unbillable percentage. These are companies that basically charge all the morning setup time and all the drive time into their estimates. So all that time is included when they estimate a job. The only hours that are not included are things like warranty work and meetings and shop cleanup and seasonal changeover and that kind of thing. So a company that does estimate more or less every hour of the day to the job, they would have a low unbillable percentage, something like 10%. Most companies are gonna be higher in and around the 20 or 25% range. What this is saying is 20% of our payroll hours aren't estimated to customers or aren't recovered in our estimates. They are a cost that we need to make sure we have built in. So what LMN is going to do to get this number is take your sales budget and divide it by your field labor hours minus 20%. So we're going to take 20% of your field labor hours and say they're unbillable. We can't count on those for sales recovery or hitting our sales goal. So based on my field labor hours minus 20%, my jobs need to average 86.74 of total revenue per hour. Again, that's not the rate we're going to charge per man for labor. What that means is if I take the price of a job and I divide it by the number of hours on the job, my jobs need to average 86.74 an hour. Now, the big key to this number is entering your unbillable hours right. So if you don't really know your unbillable hours, you can guesstimate. If you're using LMN time or you have been using LMN time, well, certainly you can have set up an unbillable job in LMN time, and you'll know your unbillable percentage to the penny just by looking back at last year and seeing exactly how many payroll hours you had and how many payroll hours were spent on unbillable job or jobs. 
key number, really important to use, really handy to use on estimates. The one last thing we'll say about this number is a construction crew will have a much higher revenue per hour on average than a maintenance crew. The reason for that is a construction crew is installing materials. So their sales have all the costs and prices of materials built into the cost of their estimates, where a maintenance is generally just labor and equipment. So a maintenance crew will typically be a lot less than a construction crew. This number here, if you've blended both maintenance and construction into your budget, will be just an average. So the median between both crews will be that. Now, if you've built a budget or your company just does construction, this is going to be very accurate. And same thing with maintenance. If you've built just a maintenance budget or your company just does maintenance, then that'll be accurate. If you do both, and if you've combined both streams into one budget, then remember this number is an average. Maintenance crews probably won't be able to hit this number, and construction crews should probably hit more than this number. It is simply an average. Sliding over to the tile one to the right, this is called your capacity and your efficiency. The number we need here is, on average, what you charge per hour for labor. So what we mean by that is when you're billing your customers for labor, either in your estimates or in time and materials, but most people don't charge time and materials. So it's what you estimate as your price per labor hour. So for example, if you charge $35 an hour for labor, that's what you're going to put in there. And you'd notice my efficiency gets very good at $35 per hour. If I charge $50 an hour for my labor, so you'll notice my capacity drops, my efficiency drops as well. This number here is on average what you charge per man hour for your labor services. And it needs to be pretty accurate in order to get your capacity right. This number is a really neat number in that here's how it works. What it does is take your field labor hours and multiply them by this number here saying, if you build every one of your field labor hours, you should be able to hit a certain amount of sales from labor. What it also then does is look at your equipment costs, material costs, and subcontracting costs. It adds the overhead that you put into your budget based on the overhead method you picked in the previous video, and then adds the profit margin you're looking for, and then displays for you if you charge the right amount for all your costs, and you did bill all these costs, you estimated them properly, then this is what your sales could or should be if you were recovering 100% of your costs. Now, there's really no reason we shouldn't recover most of these costs. Your labor rate should include some waste and inefficiency. Your equipment and materials and subs should get passed on to your customers. These are the costs for your jobs. Those should get built into your estimates. However, most companies are between 70 and 80% efficient. And that's this number down here. Now, efficiency is what my sales is. In this case, it's 1.25 million divided by my capacity, 1.5 million. What this company budget's telling me is, I've got $250,000 worth of unrecovered costs or unbilled costs. And that should be a wake up call for most companies. Though what it means though, in a good way, is that there's all kinds of opportunity to really pad your bottom line profit if you can capture some of that inefficiency. Now the reason for that inefficiency differs for every company. You might not be estimating enough labor hours. You might not be charging enough per hour. You might have way too many unbillable hours. Uh, you may not be passing on all your material costs and estimates. There's all kinds of reasons why you wouldn't be at your capacity. However, here I am at a $1.5 million company or a $1.2 million company in actual sales. And I have a difference of just about $300,000 in what I'm actually selling and what my capacity or what I should be selling is. And although that should strike a chord in terms of, wow, we're really losing out on opportunity, it should also give you some hope that there are a lot of ways to improve your bottom line if you can find a way to recapture more of your costs. Now, the other thing companies notice is if I drop this, so now I'm going to take this from $50 an hour down to $40 an hour, my efficiency goes up. And why does that make any sense? The reason this makes sense is because what I did is drop my charge out rate per hour but I didn't change my sales. And in real life, you'd probably change your sales if you were charging less an hour or charging more an hour. So here, I've dropped my, set, my charge out rate by $10 an hour, but my sales didn't change. So what it's saying is I must be a lot more efficient if I can hit the same sales goal at less per hour. Vice versa, if I increase my charge out rate per hour, my efficiency is going to drop. And that's because, again, I didn't go back to my budget sales and change them. 
and it's telling me, well, if you're charging $50 an hour and you're staying at the same sales that I plugged in when I was $40 an hour, well, then I must be less efficient. So that's how that number works there. The budget status I'm going to skip for now, and I'm going to come back to it at the end of the video, but I'm going to then move down to the budget ratio analysis. Now, to start with, we should say this. The budget ratio analysis is not intended to be professional accounting advice. All we can do here at LMN is compare your numbers to industry benchmarks gathered from studies and our own research and say, this is where profitable companies typically lie. Now, it's just an average company. You might not be an average company. You might do different kinds of work or have different levels of expertise. And so that's fine if you don't fit into the averages. What we're trying to do with this, though, is spot inconsistencies and potential mistakes and suggest to people that before they finalize their budget, they should have a look at these things. For instance, if I flip to the materials budget here, I can see that my company has uh, built in some material costs that equal about 25.3% of sales. Now, based on my mix of work, and the mix of work is coming from the budget info tab. That's coming from here. So it's very important to fill this out when you're making your budget and filling it out as accurately as you can. But based on my mix of work, the industry spends 24.6%. Now, these two numbers are very close. So at this point, there's no issue. But imagine I spent a lot more on materials. So my ratio is 33.3% now. Notice this number now goes red. And when it's red, it's indicating there's a warning. Now, if I flip back to my analysis tab, you should now see that I've got two warnings that appear. One of them says, my material ratio is higher than average. My ratio is 33. The recommended or the industry average is 24.6. And what it's going to do is prompt me with a bunch of questions that I should ask myself to make sure I've built an accurate material budget. Now, once again, Maybe your budget's accurate to the penny and you just don't fit into the industry averages. That's why you need a real professional financial advisor like an accountant to take a look at this for you if you're unsure. But Wellman's trying to help you here in saying the average company spends this, you're spending this. Are you sure you've done these things or have you possibly made one of these mistakes? Now, the other flip side is when I increase my material budget and I didn't change my sales, what happened is my profit also got a lot lower. So when my profit got a lot lower, way below 10%, it triggered another warning that said, hey, your profit ratio is lower than average. Yours is 2%, the recommended is 10%. And again, it's given me some advice and some questions. So I've put my material costs back to what they were and I've flipped back to the analysis tab and you can see those warnings have now disappeared. The warnings will get triggered on any tab where things look different. For instance, if my overhead was high, I go back to the analysis tab, now I'm going to get this warning about overhead and again, a warning about my profit ratio. So LMN will try to look for inconsistencies in your budget when compared to uh, industry benchmarks and suggest some improvements for you. We strongly recommend you read these improvements. They may help you find simple data entry errors or things that you may have put in two budgets. Uh, oftentimes, a non-profitable budget is the result of someone just maybe going through the budget too fast or maybe not watching all these videos or just missing something and accidentally entering something in two different places or missing it all together. The questions here are designed to help you eliminate those errors. Now, if you go through those questions and you still feel like you've done everything right, it's probably time to reach out to us or reach out to a professional financial advisor like a consultant or accountant, get them to look at your numbers for you. This budget might just be the single most important financial document in your company because it's going to be the benchmark by which every estimate gets built. Every price that you build moving forward is going to be based on these numbers. It's definitely worth spending a bit of time and possibly even spending a bit of money to get a professional to look at it for you. Because in the long run, finding a mistake here or helping your budget get to where it needs to be in terms of profit is going to make you all kinds of money and the cost that you spend to fix it will be insignificant when it when you look at the impact it had on the way you price your work. Now finally, when you're done your budget, and I'm going to go back here to overhead and flip that back to where it should have been. When you're done your budget, and ideally you've got no errors or warnings found, you're ready to activate your budget for estimating. Now, if you've just finished your first budget, your budget status here will show under construction. Mine's active as I've been using it for other things. 
When a budget's under construction, it can't be used for estimating. This is so if an owner's playing with a budget or creating a budget and it's not finished, no estimator is going to accidentally use that budget for estimating and get all kinds of wacky prices. So right now your budget says under construction here, but there's an activate button. And when you're ready for this budget to be used for estimating, you want to click the activate button. When you click activate, it's going to ask you, are you sure? You're going to hit OK. And then this is going to flip to active. And as soon as this is active, it means this budget can be used for estimators to start estimating. You can still come back to this budget and make changes at any time. It's not going to prevent you from making changes. But now that it's active, you're ready to use it for estimating. And when you're done, when it's time to retire this budget, when you're done with it, maybe you've made a new one next year, you simply go to the budget info and you hit the archive button and that will archive this budget so that it can no longer be used for new estimating, but it'll stay intact. That way you can always look back on this budget and see why your estimate prices came out the way they did. A handy thing to also do year over year when you're making new budgets is to use the copy function. The copy function's great because you can take 2015's budget, copy it, and then it'll make a budget that you can name 2016's budget. And then all I need to do is go through here and change the things. I don't need to build the whole budget from scratch again. I'll just go change the things from 2015 that have changed. I'm gonna add sales or add people or change my materials, whatever it may be. And then I've got 2016's budget done in a fraction of the time that it took you to build your first one. So that's a little bit about the budget analysis tab. Make sure you understand on billable hours and try your best to get a percentage here that accurately reflects your true on billable hours because what LMN's gonna do going forward is compare your estimated revenue per hour. So it's gonna look at the estimate and the revenue per hour on each job and compare it back to the budget. And also make sure if you've got any warnings here to really double check the questions that LMN is prompting you with and make sure you've done everything correctly. And if you still feel like you've done everything correctly, why not reach out to us? You can reach us on support at support at goelmn.com and you can book a budget review with one of our in-house customer support experts. They'll take a look at your numbers with you and also suggest some possible things. And if we still don't feel confident after that, then maybe we'll recommend you to a professional financial advisor to take a look at your company and make some adjustments or some tweaks. But let us have a look at it first. The service is free and we can also possibly spot just simple data errors, duplication, etc., uh, based on our own knowledge of working with budgets. Congratulations, you've made it all the way through from the first create a new budget right through to budgeting analysis. Hope these tutorial videos were worthwhile for you, but you're ready to move on to your next step, which is the estimating catalog to start building your list of costs and prices that will feed your estimates going forward. Thanks for watching.